For quite some time now, disc brakes have been causing quite a stir, and whether we like them or not, it is quite clear they're here to stay. Now, more and more road bikes are coming equipped with disc brakes and becoming increasingly popular on TT or triathlon bikes like I have here today. So I thought I'd run you through some maintenance tips for them. Okay, so imagine this. You get yourself a brand new bike with disc brakes. You're so excited to go for a little spin around the block. You grab a fistful of brake and nothing. It really lacks power. Now, don't worry because this is actually completely normal. And you, I guess you can kind of compare this to your standard rim brakes because in the same way that you need to set them up, you need to tow them out and whatnot, you need to set up and bed in your disc brakes. So for this, you need to generate some heat to get them stopping at their best. And actually, by not doing this, you can end up with some rather noisy, judgery or weak brakes. So all you need to do to bed them in is pedal up to a moderate speed of 15 kilometers an hour or so. Sit down in the saddle and apply the brakes evenly without skidding until the speed drops to a walking pace. Then just release the brakes whilst you're still moving and then repeat this roughly 10 times. You'll feel the brake power increasing with each repetition and then perform the same set of steps but increase your speed to 25 kilometers an hour and repeat roughly five times through. Okay, so when it comes to maintaining your bike, such as your chain, which mine really needs at the moment, just be really careful where any oil or aerosol lubricants go, because if you get that onto the disc rotor and therefore obviously onto the pads, it's not only gonna make the braking sound really bad, it can also reduce that braking performance. So just be really precise where you're using any of this oil or lubricant to reduce that contamination to the disc rotor. Uh, failing that, you can actually remove the wheel to avoid that altogether and I quite often actually drape a clean rag over that brake block and the pads to keep them safe and covered. And that leads me nicely on to the cleaning. Now, if you do get oil or lubricant onto your disc brake rotors, then it's really important that you clean them as soon as possible to avoid then getting that lubricant or oil onto the disc brake pads. Now, for this, I personally use a disc brake cleaner like this. I'll spray that over the rotor. That will break down that lubricant, and then you can use a kitchen towel or an old clean rag to wipe that off. Now, this is actually just good practice, regardless of whether you contaminate the disc brake rotors or not, because if you can do this from time to time, that will just really help to maximize that braking performance. But if you have unfortunately got it on the disc brake pads, well, there are a number of remedies out there. Some suggest that you can take them out, put them in the oven, or even bake them with a blowtorch. But if you speak to most experts out there, they pretty much all tell you, just replace them. Now, it is pretty much near impossible to fully decontaminate those pads once you've got a lubricant or oil on them. So just save yourself the hassle and get a new set. Now, probably the biggest complaint I hear with disc brakes is the rubbing from them. Now, they do actually have quite a small tolerance to play with between the pads and the disc brakes, so it's really important that they're set up correctly and you can avoid that rubbing. Now, first port of call is to make sure that the wheel is actually in. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I've actually lost count of the amount of times that I've adjusted my gears or realigned my brakes only to find out that the wheel wasn't fully seated. Failing that, you'll want to loosen the caliper off. This allows the caliper to move around. Pull the brake lever, this will then square that caliper up. Now keep holding the brake lever and then you can retighten the bolts for the caliper. And there you go. But another cause of rubbing disc brakes can be when the lever is pulled when a wheel isn't installed in the frame. And this often happens when you're traveling with your bike, you're chucking your bike in the back of a car, or you're flying with your bike. Now, what is happening here is the pads are essentially sat on these pistons that quite cleverly move in very gradually as the pads wear down, and therefore reducing that gap between the pads and the disc brakes. So, when your wheel isn't installed in the frame and you accidentally pull that lever, those pads move in closer and therefore end up rubbing on that disc rotor. If that happens, you want to take the pads out and use something like a plastic tire lever and gently edge those pistons back out to reset them, reinstall the pads and off you go. But to avoid all of this in the first place, you could travel with something like this, which can slot in between the pads and you're good to go. But if you don't have one of these or you've forgotten it, you can be imaginative. I've used things like cardboard or credit cards in the past. Now, another thing to be wary of when you're traveling with your bike is the rotors themselves. Now, they're pretty robust, but they can actually be bent if enough pressure is placed on them. Now, 
The easiest thing to do is actually remove them all together and it is actually a lot easier than you think because with the correct tool, like this one here, you can simply unscrew the outer cap and quickly slide that rotor off, which is a really good idea if you're popping your wheels into a bike bag, for instance. But if you are chucking your bike into the back of a car or something like that, then you maybe don't need to go quite this far, but just make sure that the wheels and the rotors are really well cushioned. So just have some rags or some cushions at the ready. And finally, if you're using hydraulic disc brakes and they start to feel a bit spongy at the lever and probably not braking quite so well, well, it is time to bleed the system. And this is just like having to replace your cable on your standard traditional rim brakes. Now, each brand and sometimes each model have their own methods and bleed kits. So just make sure that you consult your manual or the brand to make sure that you're doing it correctly. However, if you're really not sure, there's absolutely no harm in just popping down to your local bike shop and making sure that the job is done correctly. Another thing to think about is the pad wear because the pads do wear out just in the same way that your standard rim brake pads will wear out. So just drop your wheel out from time to time, just check that pad wear, make sure that you've got enough. If they do need replacing, just think back to that previous step where we'll need to push those pistons back out to reset them and obviously you'll need to bed those pads in. Now if you like today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. If you've got any more questions about disc brakes, please do drop them in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more on bike maintenance and some hacks with that, then just click up there. And if you'd like to see our disc versus rim brake video, then just click down there.